now going whatever way you like to do, bring both arms here and hold and make sure the spine is straight. Spine has to be straight. And slowly move to the other side. Both arms to the center and then move slowly. Maybe if you have not warmed up, if you do this like that, it'll be easier. Then you can go a little slower. Up. And that's where you come back. Now bring your knees together and then lower the knees to one side as you exhale and go to the other side, knees to the other side. Keep going. Knees to one side, knees to the other side. Keep your knees together when you do this. Knees together, heels together. Then you will have a chance to separate the knees and heels also. So both ways it can be done. Now open the heels wider, open the feet, and then bring the right knee towards the left heel. And turn your head to the right. Stay here for a moment, close your eyes. And change other side. Left knee to the right heel. Now do it a little faster now, right knee to the left heel, left knee, keep going a little bit. All the numbness will be gone and the hips will be functioning better. See, when you get older, the first thing that happens is the hips go down. Hips have problems always. So be careful with your hips. Now, Place the right knee down on the floor, bring your left heel on top of the right, right thigh, and then bring your left arm. If you cannot bring the left arm, it is okay. So don't do things which you are not capable of doing at this time if you are new. Do only what is appropriate. Then go to the other side. Keep the heel separate. Left knee comes to the right heel and the right heel on top of the left thigh, and turn your head. Over the left shoulder. Really. And then come back. As you come back, now this is one of the fundamentals uh, to prevent any knee problem. So what you do is, point the toes here. This is Dandasana. And then point the toes and flex. Point. Flex, point, flex, point, flex. So when you point, what happens? The front of the body, front of the body, front of the legs are stimulated. Now it stretches more. Now push the heels, the back of the body. Then you do it 21 times when you're at home. Here we do it only a few times. 21 times if you do, your knees will function better. Do you see the feeling here, the calf muscles and the hamstring muscles here? Do you see? This is most important, especially for people who have problems with the knees. Point the toes and flex, point, flex, point, flex, point, flex. Now, slowly bring your right heel on top of the left big toe. Then drop it down so that the right big toe touches the floor on the left side and turn your head to the right side. And keep changing on the side. Left heel on top of the right big toe and bring it down to the side and allow the Big toe of the left foot to touch the floor if you can and turn your head to the left. Now bring your arms forward. You're going to, you know what that is, right? Rowing the boat. 
you are on the ocean and then your smooth sailing here is moving. Exhale, move forward and inhale, go back. Forward and back. Forward and back. Forward and back. Now reverse that. You want to go to the shore because you don't want to be in the middle of the ocean now. So going back to the ocean. Going back to the shore. Now place your palms on just beyond the knee on the on the shin. Hold it. And slowly you are going down. Very slowly. Exhale. Keep on exhaling, exhaling, exhaling. Bring your arms forward, keep going down. And if you change your mind, come forward again, then go back. And all the way down now, exhale, long exhalation. Don't be in a hurry to come down to the floor. Slowly, 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 slowly. All the way down. Relax. Take some deep breaths again. Now, this is very important for Jastikasana. Bring your arms over the head. Inhale. Arms over the head, fine. Now extend your arms beyond the head. Point your toe and be still. What's happening here now? Here, the front of the entire front of the body. Back body. When you push the heel, the back body is ready. Now let's do more. So if you push the knee down all the way to the ground with the hand, then your right shoulder may be on top of the hand.
don't expect to touch the knee with your chin if it's not possible. Don't do it. I'm not ready for that. Okay, two times and you're rotating. Rotate the knee and hip a few times. I invite the left knee. If it's not on the right side, then send it at the left side. Extend the left leg this time. Put it right side. Hold on to wherever you can on the left, maybe. Or maybe wherever you can touch. Take the right hand. Hold. And as you do that, those of you who are more familiar with the plan, bend your right knee, reach with your left hand, left hand holding on, reach with your right hand. Now slowly release. And as you release, bring both ends, both legs over to the right side. Both legs over to the right side. This is called a Jatarak Pravarti. So the Agni is kindled. Reach with your right hand wherever you can touch. Keep your knee straight. And Try to reach with your strap. If you don't have a strap, use your judgment. Keep your left shoulder down. Close your eyes, please. Whenever you are in an asana, the asana benefits you better when you close your eyes. The whole problem in the world is not we are not closing our eyes. Always awake, always with the external. And slowly come back, back to the other side. Yeah, knees together, heels together. First, let us start with the Down, please. down. All you do is, if possible, reach your left arm wherever you can, not the shoulder. Both legs up. 
Both legs up. Both legs up. Then bring your arm over and then raise your chest forward. One of the five Tibetan rites, one of them we are doing here. Slowly as to rain, exhaling, slowly bring the legs. Bend your legs, place the feet down, place your hips in your palms under the legs. Then bring both legs up, then one leg up. Now, those of you, Requires a little bit of energy, so we have to try that. Palms facing down. And reach over the palms. Inhale. Slowly bring the legs up. Hold one. Hold two. Hold three. Hold four. Hold five. Now stay at the 90 degree angle. Hold. Exhaling. Slowly bring the legs down. Hold ten. Home nine, home eight, home seven, home six, home five, home four, home three, home two, home one, stay the same one day interval. Let's do that a few times on your own now. Inhaling, bring the legs up. And when you exhale, you are. Correspondingly with the exhalation, you are coming down. When the exhalation is complete, the heels are on the floor. Keep going. Do this three more times. Now slowly bring the feet or bring your palms underneath your head. You know, and make sure the elbows are down on the floor. As you exhale, raise your chest and chin. Look at your feet and be still. This time you keep your eyes open. How long can you stay there? Not long. Not long? <laughs> yes, you can. When you have asana siddhi, you can stay there forever. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you're writing, right elbow, right hand. That's it. All right. Next elbow, left knee. Touch. Keep going. If you're vata, you want to go fast. If you're kapha, you do it slowly. And get the benefit. Pitta is right in the middle. <laughs> and keep doing this until one day, to your surprise, the knee and the elbow touching there, and you are in ananda. <laughs> <laughs> now, right elbow to the left knee, left elbow to the right knee. Good knee, head elbow. Touch and step. Touch and step. And step. At the rate we are going, it will be 12 o'clock when we finish this class. So obviously we have to be time conscious. Now slowly, we're going to come to the R4 position, any way you like. Palms, back straight. 
and hold. Slowly inhaling. When you're ready, inhaling. Raise your chin. Exhale. Slowly bring the chest and chin towards. Chin moving towards. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Knees rounding the back, the other wrist. It's very, very important pose. So continue with that. This is the time when you are really rounding the back and doing the opposite of that. Most of the time, you are not supposed to round the back, but this is the time you should do it. And once you've done that, bring your right thigh up higher and higher. And if you are Ten years old, you should be able to touch the head with your heel. And bring the right knee towards the chin. Keep going. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Keep going. Make all the sound necessary. And do the other side now. This is called the Bastrika Pranayam. Do this inhale with force, exhale with force. And you like that because you something can happen. And Put the head down here, chin down, keep the hips up, chin down on the top. Hips up. And allow the chin to touch the floor and keep moving the chin forward and up. And up. Let me see. Chin forward along the mat and go up into the Bhujangasana and, and then come back. I'm assuming you're all vegetarians, correct? <laughs> Anybody here taking eggs? Vegetarians. Okay. Vegetarians have a problem because their B12 is low. As a result, all kinds of problems with it. So you have to take B, 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 vitamin B12. I'm not a doctor, but I'm talking from the Ayurvedic point of view. B12, 65 mg. Then that will also promote the breathing. It helps breathing, it helps digestion, and then your blood circulation improves. And then, so now, did you do both sides? Now, one more, one more again, chin down, move forward, raise this time, push your left back, elbows on the floor, raise your chin, chest forward. Whenever you do back bend, this is the first back bend you should do. Don't do the Mahasana, just the pose. Now press your right elbow, bring your left arm forward. And then change. Now bring your left arm up. And then both knees together. Lift both heels up and the right elbow. Keep the time. Both heels up. 
and the right elbow up only if you can. <laughs> Come back, brother. Come back, brother. Come back on your abdomen. Then to the other side. Both heels together. And then press your right palm on the floor, keep lifting the both heels up. And the left elbow, if you can. The left elbow is not important. If you keep your left elbow down, it will have difficulty. If you have difficulty, don't raise your left elbow. And release from that. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> See, all the sutta asana are enough. You don't even need to go to the standing pose. Everything is there because sutta means <laughs> you are still comfortable, but you should not sleep. Okay. And slowly release. Okay, come back. Anantasana is the next is what she is doing, but we don't have time for that. Bring your palms, hold, press your palms, keep lifting, both heels up, both heels up, and then move the chest, move the chest towards the thigh, and press your right heel down completely, bring your left knee up, hold. Let the left knee go towards the chest. Move towards the chest. Hold it. Raise it. Raise the left knee to the chest. And the right knee. The reason I ask you to do that, then the right heel can settle down here. Nothing. The other position. But the only reason I don't want you to do both heels because one heel comes easily, both heels are difficult. Now, those who are familiar, both heels down. Both heels up, both heels down. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Now, keep walking with your arms back. Then bring your palms underneath your... Underneath your feet. Bend your elbows forward. Insert your... Palm completely bend the knees first. Bend the knees, reaching underneath. And then the whole arm, whole palm on there. And you release. Release the arm. Turn the fingers. Turn the palms out. Both heels up, Mister. Both heels up. And slowly extend. Jump to the hands. Then jump to the hands. But bend the knees first. Land in the same plane where you land it. Don't 
Left arm up and over. You swing. So now what I do is I put two strong people in my And then you bend the knee until the chest, the thigh is parallel to the floor. And then this side. And then Partner do the same. One more time. Down over. Now we do what is known as
सर्वांगति पूर्ण सर्वांगति Class years, years. That's completely down. I'm not. Any constipation problems will be resolved. Unfortunately, you don't have any And then left one. And some of you, someone like this, then from both arms down and then up. Okay. So now what we do is so come down to the floor. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. 
Valley 100%. Oh, my dear, 
Some of you cannot reach the floor. This is the correct pose. So some of you cannot reach the floor. What do you do? Bend any. Then bring your palms. Okay. When you, when you cannot do this, like that. Then try to straighten the knees. No, no, stay there. Now to straighten the knees. The chest is away. Chest is away. Hold. Now bring the right leg all the way back. Okay, fine. Now the knee and over the ankle should be correct. And the palms are where they are, there is no more. Now bring the other leg back. Body straight, plank position. There should be no bending here. Then drop your knees down, chin chest down. Chin between the palms. No, no, here. No, 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 here. Bring it, bring it between the palms. No, no, oh, yeah. no, no, you move forward. No, no, that's it. Hips up. Now move the knee, chin beyond, and then go up. When you go up, some of you have difficulty with the Bhujangasana. So, shoulders should be down, elbows close to the body. Now, press your palm into the palm. Stay there. Then bring your right hand all the way up. Bring it forward in one movement like that. So, it has to be like this. That comes with practice. When the other, see the knee, the knee is over the ankle. If you see any Indian textbook, the knee is not correctly done there. Somehow they, have, they haven't formed the picture correctly. Now this is the way it should be. Now bring the other leg, see when you go back there. See now what to do is, in order to bring the other leg, you have to keep moving this knee forward. And that will help you bring the knee left hand. So do that. Move the knee forward and back. Get the momentum, then bring your arms forward. Clasp your elbows behind the knees 
and allow the chest to merge. This will take a long time to, to practice because it needs flexibility, a lot of flexibility. She has both flexibility and strength. Now bring your arms up, bend back, and then follow the breathing. Bend back, bend back, and then come forward. Yeah. So, comes with practice. Now, I wanted to do one more pose, which is excellent. Oh, this is the one I was supposed to do. Then drop your hip down. If the hip doesn't obey you, but put a blank underneath, blank underneath, or a, or a, or the, now, this is the most difficult pose for men. For, for women, it is very easy. Now what you do, you are supposed to bring your arms up. So what you do, you go to the wall, and then the arms go up to the wall. One, one needs to hold this position with the help of a teacher. Or you can use the brain. This way, when you do this, fantastic. Then, in your case, you bend the back leg with the hand. Think we did one, one side and the other side also we do. To do this for men, this will be done. But the women automatically they do it. Men's <laughs> men back flexibility. So try to do this. Use the blanket, the essential. Okay. And come back, sit on the hip, put the head down, relax a moment. Next uh, birth, I will be born as a woman. Because I like the dance too. Dance part, the Bharatanatyam also. Actually, Bharatanatyam and yoga, they are so close to each other. That's why I like Bharatanatyam, because I like yoga. Now come down, sit it on the hip, put the head on the left one. And we'll see how much time we get to yoga. So that you can start there. Rajamati wants to be a boy. What's that? Rajamati wants to. Oh, yeah. Of course, I know. Yeah. She, she's coming tomorrow. She will pass. <laughs> Task her when she comes. <laughs> okay. Now we can start the questions and then the organizers. I'm sorry if I took you to the advanced position. You are supposed not to do it by struggling. Yeah. Okay. So, some of the forces you can skip if you have to. We can only do the table part. So, we do the Inversions, inversions are very important. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah, five minutes. Can we do the Sarvangasana? Sarvangasana. Those who want to do uh, headstand Shirshasana, please do. But Sarvangasana is quite sufficient. Only in Sarvangasana, the chin touches the chest. And that's so important. Dharangara Bandha happens there. That's the reason it is so much. 
no other, see, if you, if you sit and then try to bring the chin to the chest, it's not going to happen. Only in Sarvanga. That's why it's so important. I'm <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Complete the counterpoise, you're ready for yoga nidra. Yeah, in a Yes, Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. No damage? Always I say, first thing is, do not attempt Anything advanced unless you are sure of it, unless you are comfortable. The yoga nidra is the practice of relaxation, which we deem in responsive sleep. That means you are not actually sleeping, you are between waking and sleeping. Probably get me. And if you follow the instructions that I'm going to give you, if you follow them, you will find out that it's always relaxing. So keeping the palms facing the ceiling, yeah, from the fingers, make sure that the palms are closed. Allow the feet to fall sideways. And begin to feel the body. Feel the meeting points of the body and the mind. The shoulders, the elbows, when they touch the floor, into the palms, into the hips, into the knees, into the heels. Feel all those meeting points once again. See how you are sinking into the floor and move. If the body sinks into the floor, you are also feeling the stiffness of the body increases. Now bring your attention to the chest area. From the chest, feel the space from the chest to the ceiling. Just feel the feeling of the space. Now, on the right side of your body, feel the space on the right. Now do the same with your left side from the left side of the body to the wall on the left. Now bring your attention to the top of the head and feel the space from that spot to the wall behind and beyond your head. Now feel the space from the soles of your feet to the wall in front. 
now feel the space once more. Under the body. The body is grounded to the floor, and your body is absolutely still and comfortably still. The word comfort in the meditation. If you're comfortable, but not comfortable, you have to move until you are comfortable. So any change in position you can do now, but try not to keep moving. Try to be still. Only in stillness, you get a deep relaxation. Now bring your attention to each part of the body. By bringing the consciousness to the right hand thumb. Your mind is moving to the thumb, but the thumb is not moving. Bringing awareness to the thumb. Second finger. The good, very quickly now. Second finger, the third finger, the fourth finger, and the fifth finger, the front of the palm, back to the the elbow, the right shoulder, and the waist, right hip, right thigh, knee, ankle, heel, the right big toe, second. Now feel the whole of your right arm and the whole of your right leg, the whole of your right side, and feel becoming heavier. And with that heaviness, you're also relaxing even more. Do the same with your left side, left hand thumb, second finger, third, fourth, fifth, front of the palm. Palm, wrist, elbow, shoulder, armpit, waist, left hip, thigh, knee, arm muscle, ankle, heel, left big toe, second, third, fifth. Now feel the whole of your left side once again, making sure. It is heavier, but also relaxing. Now, attention on both arms and both legs. Both arms and both legs, heavier than before. As a result, you are also feeling a deeper relaxation. Bring your attention now to your lower back, middle back, and upper back. And begin to soften the entire spine with your thoughts. Bring your attention to the back of the neck. And soften the back of the neck. Continue with the back of the head, also relaxing in the top of the head. Now, the top of the head, please. Feel the forehead and the space. The space between the eyebrows is a very important center of energy called the eye of Shiva, the third eye of Shiva. Continue down to the eyes, the right eye, the left eye, the right ear, the left ear, the right nostril, the left nostril, and the right cheek, the left cheek. The mind is moving to all these parts quickly. Now feel the upper lip and the lower lip. Front of the neck, chest, and coming. Feel this. 
tolto. Now begin to expand your body from the head to the toes. Develop in a homogeneous awareness. The whole body. Become aware of the space occupied by the body. Become aware of the whole body and the flow. The whole body in relation to the flow. At the same time, become aware of the meeting point of the body and the flow. These are very subtle physical points between the body and the Feel the meeting point between the back of your head and the floor, shoulder blades and the floor, elbows and the floor, back of the hands and the floor, buttocks and the floor, the backs and the floor, the heels. your attention now to the eyelids, feel the narrow line of meeting between the upper and lower eyelids. Feel the soft points where they meet. Intensify your awareness in the eyelids. Now, the lips. Center your attention on the line between the lips, the space between the lips. From the lips, we go to the breath. Draw your attention to the natural ingoing and outgoing breath. Feel the breath moving along the passage between the navel and the throat. On inhalation, it rises from the navel to the throat. On exhalation, it descends from the throat to the navel. Be completely aware of the respiration. Navel to throat, throat to navel. Do not try to force the breath. Just bring awareness to the breath. Now maintaining your awareness, maintaining your breath, beginning from number 10, first exhalation on number 10. Second exhalation number nine, continue until then. Now you may stop counting. Come back to the body. Awaken the feeling of heaviness in the body. The feeling of heaviness in every single part of the body. You are feeling so heavy that you are sinking into the floor. Awareness of heaviness. Awareness of heaviness. Now, let us reverse the whole scene. Awaken the feeling of lightness, the weightlessness. 
you completely weight less in your body, in all parts of the body, your body feels like a piece of cotton, so very weightless. Awareness of lightness. Now begin to awaken the sensation of heat. Awaken the experience of heat in the body. The whole body, you feel it is hot. The whole body is hot. You feel hot all over. Recollect the feeling of heat when you're out in the sun with no shade, heat all over the body. Awareness of heat. Now once again, change and feel the experience of cold. Awaken the experience of Bitter cold in the body. Imagine you're walking on a cold floor in winter. Your feet feel very cold. You feel cold all over. Awareness of coldness. Completely cold. Bitter cold. Now bring your awareness to the dark space you see in front of your closed eyes. The dark space that you see in front of your closed eyes. Actually, this space can also be visualized in front of the forehead. So if you want to explore it a little, you can shift your gaze to the forehead. Watch the darkness that you see before you very carefully with detachment. Do not become involved. Rest your mind in this warm and friendly darkness. Any subtle phenomena manifest, for example, colors or patterns, simply take note of these and continue with your awareness. If thoughts begin to happen, let them come and go. But continue watching the dark space. Continue this with detached awareness. Slowly now become aware of your breathing. Become aware of your natural breathing. Become aware of your relaxation. Feel your normal breath. When you need the awareness of your physical existence. 
Become aware of your arms and legs, your body lying stretched out on the floor. Become aware of the meeting point between your body and the floor. Once again, gradually develop awareness of the room. Without opening the eyes, feel the colors of the walls, the ceiling. And then open your ears to any noise in the room. And the noise of the outside. Generalize your mind, take your mind out. Do not open your eyes until I tell you. Become completely external. Quietly for a few moments. Keep your eyes closed. Gradually. Make sure that you are wide awake. Take a deep breath, inhale, and a long breath. That bend your legs, shift forward to the side. And then run it up to the child's pose. Sit down cozy, casual, and comfortable. Yoga Nidra is a practice.
to Use a blanket if you can't. Never hesitate to use a blanket. Even when you are listening to a lecture or something somewhere. Relax and get comfortable. Focus on your breathing. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Five seconds, inhale, ten seconds. Well done. Next one is six and twelve. Relax and get comfortable. Focus on your breathing. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe out. Well done. Next one is seven forty. Cannot do seven fourteen, just do when you can. But please keep the ratio the same. Relax and get comfortable. Focus on your breathing. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Well done. To be eight and sixteen. Relax and get comfortable. Focus on your breathing. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Well 
Well done. Relax and get comfortable. Focus on your breathing. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Well done. Relax and get comfortable. Focus on your breathing. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Well done. We have five minutes left on. Yeah. So we want to make sure that you know those of you who are bringing in. This is the way it goes. 5, 10, 6, 12, 7, 14, then 8, 16, 9, 18, and finally 10, 20. Why is 10, 20? Because you will take only two bets in a minute. Each of us is 10, 20, two bets in a minute. That means it's going to be really long. Three bets. That's right. Artists who lived there for the 60 years. Okay. So, things who have done that before, but two things. Three awareness as much as you can. And then take away the awareness from, from the computer and then do the same. And to be, be aware of the brain. Closing your eyes. Oh, 
Because we are not, we are not able to complete all the answers. Someone 